currently have a subscription to ChatGPT Plus and Midjourney, and I want to find out if Dali, the image generator for ChatGPT, has caught up with Midjourney enough that I can cancel my Midjourney subscription. In this video, I'm going to talk about the key differences between the two products, and then look at some image tests, which gave some unexpected results. The first key difference is the interface. Dali runs on ChatGPT, so if you have the web app or the mobile app, you can just go into there and ask it to create an image. Midjourney, on the other hand, runs on Discord, so you have to go into Discord and then type in Imagine, Prompt, and then put your prompt in there. The next key difference is the artistic quality of the images. Midjourney still has this ability to create these Unreal Engine type, well-lit, beautifully rendered images of futuristic landscapes, and it can come up with things which are really kind of breathtakingly beautiful. Where Dali excels is in its comprehension of maybe more difficult, complex prompts. You can give Dali a whole like, article and ask it to create an illustration around that, and it'll actually use its large language model to condense that down to a prompt and then process it and create an image. You can't do this with Midjourney. You actually have to kind of put some time and effort into carefully creating a concise prompt which is short enough that the Midjourney engine can process. Dali is considerably quicker, executing about half the time of Midjourney. And both these products have iterative capability. What that means is you can go on to create variations on the image. With Dali, you do that just by basic language. You kind of sell, sell it what you want. And this is a bit hit and miss at the moment. It kind of works maybe half the time. Um, in this example here, you can see that I've kind of asked it to put the a cartoon character that I previously generated at the bottom of the picture, but it actually changed the cartoon character away from what the original prompt uh, required and uh, actually produced. With Midjourney, it's a lot more restrictive. You have certain buttons which do certain things. You can vary regions or make variances on an image. You can upscale it and zoom out or pan across and it will kind of fill in the gaps. This is much more restrictive in what you can do, but a lot of the time it's more useful. It's kind of in a real kind of development environment, you, you're using this more and it comes in quite useful. Whereas with Dali, you can ask it to kind of overlay one image on top of another, but anything more complex than that, then it starts to struggle a little bit. From a cost perspective, ChatGPT Plus is $20 a month plus tax. And then Midjourney has a range of tiers. I use the basic plan, that's more than enough for kind of occasional daily use. One thing I'd say is that ChatGPT Plus is much more than just an image generator. Obviously, you have the large language model and all the plugins. It's almost as if the image generator is almost like an add-on bonus, really, to that package, rather than being specifically kind of that is the product. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the image tests. So the first one here is an image for a sleek, modern logo for a tech startup, a stylized cloud with a lightning bolt using a clear blue silver color scheme with minimalist and futuristic. So I think Dali's really nailed this. And if you go down to the mid journey, you can see it's kind of, it's not got the hang of what we were after. We were asking it for a cloud with a lightning bolt. It hasn't really done that effectively at all. Whereas Dali has understand the, the whole prompt, it's kind of looked at what's important within that prompt, and then given that more focus on the image generation, it's a much more usable logo, in my opinion. Then we got onto illustrations, and this is where Midjourney really starts to excel. This is a, for a children's book. You can see the image quality is just like, if it was like an animated film, this is kind of maybe from the 90s or noughties, where well, this could be kind of from the 70s or something. You're, you're years and years ahead in the, in the quality of the images that Midjourney is creating. The next one is a vector background for a pitch deck, an abstract geometric pattern, shades of blue and green with subtle gradients and modern clean look. Again, I think this is something where Dali has actually created a more usable image. I could use this straight into the kind of background of a pitch deck much more than I could these kind of abstract gradient images. If I better describe the prompt, I could probably get Midjourney to create something like this, but straight out of the box, that single prompt, the, the Dali image is better and more effective within a business setting. The next one is an artistic portrait of a woman in Renaissance style wearing an elegant gown seated in front of a classic Italian landscape with soft natural lights in. This one is almost really good. It's just the eyes mess it up and it makes it unusable from Dali. And then if we go down to the Midjourney ones, you've got four really stunningly beautiful women which are almost too modern for the period. So one thing I think about Midjourney is that it's so optimized, it can almost be over-optimized. We've got a model here which has been trained on a consensus ideal of what beauty is. 
when it's giving you the four images every time you're clicking variations or upscaling the single one of them image, you're actually helping train their model on which images you like. People click more beautiful images. And what it comes up with is this kind of standardized, almost Kardashian look of what we think of as beauty in Western cultures. There is some distortions here on this top left front. You can see the hands are a little bit distorted, maybe the shoulder as well. But generally, it's done a really good job of creating the very detailed artistic images. The next one is a breathtaking fantasy landscape with a floating island above a crystal clear lake. The island should have a small ancient looking castle surrounded by lush greenery and waterfalls cascading down to the lake. This is where AI image generators really excel in creating kind of imaginary images. I think the image, the mid journey ones are still better. They've kind of, they look a little bit more advanced, but both of them have done an incredible job. I was impressed by how both of the AI image generators got the cascading waterfalls into a lake really well. I thought that kind of longer prompt might be something that mid journey would struggle with, but it didn't at all. The next one is a futuristic cityscape at night. You can see again, they've both done an incredible job here. You've got a very sci-fi vision of what a future world might look like. The next one is an interesting use case. We're creating a realistic mock-up of a new fly fishing reel. So you can see that Dali is maybe not the best product. Like you've got two reel seats here. There's kind of the lines on one side, but not on the other, and the spokes are a little bit weird. It's, it's not massively useful for a designer trying to come up with a design for a new product. In contrast to this, Mid Journey's absolutely excelled. It's created four products with different kind of styling and design, which I think are amazing and the, the, the kind of the attention to detail and the, the lighting and the, the actual materials used and the color schemes are really useful for someone doing this kind of work. I think Mid Journey has a little bit more ability to kind of get creative with this. The next one is food presentation and we're going for a plate of lasagna with garlic bread and like a Michelin star style. Mid Dali, almost completely useless. You can't use this for anything. Um, it's not gonna help you when you're kind of designing a presentation for a plate. And again, Mid Journey absolutely nailed it. Like you can use this, you can see, you can come up with ideas for a Jew and uh, pea sprouts on your lasagna if that's what you're into. The next one is a cartoon character. We've got a computer program here, blonde hair and blue eyes. You can see Dali's come up with this image, which is very usable. You could cut this out because it's on a white background. It's pretty kind of efficient and effective. It's something you could use in a kind of a business setting to kind of put on an avatar or something like that. In contrast to that, you can see that Mid Journey's images are like straight out of a Pixar movie. They're just light years ahead in terms of quality, the rendering, the lighting. It really is a very, very impressive end product. So from these tests, I can come to the conclusion that Dali is very, very capable and it's accelerating at a faster pace than Mid Journey, I think. The integration of the large language model can do things that Mid Journey just can't, whether that be iterating on images or taking a long article and saying, create an illustration for this. It can use the large language model to then break that down into a prompt and generate an effective image. Mid Journey can't do that. You have to put more time and effort into creating the prompts. But I think the end product with Mid Journey for most examples, particularly things that have like a creative aspect or an artistic aspect, is just a slightly higher quality. If you're using it in a business setting, you probably don't need Mid Journey as much because you're not looking for that st artistic style. If you can create vectors and icons and logos and that kind of thing, then probably Dali is a better product for you. If you want something that is artistic and creative and in my opinion, the most capable AI image generator, then certainly Mid Journey is well worth the subscription price. I hope you found this video useful and it's provided some insights into the lead into AI image generators. Thank you for watching.